Hi YouTube, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, I just couldn't shake the feeling of um, rabbis teaching the Gentiles Judaism when uh, Christ and even in their own scriptures a non-Jew will become their Messiah, Mashiach. Um, isn't Jewish. They even in their own teachings, and people don't seem to realize, especially Christians, but the rabbinical community, um, they think they're teaching you Judaism when the progression from the root of David is Christ's blood in us that is showing them and trying to teach them that that is our roots and we're the progression of that dropping the sacrifices and the rituals um sacrifices will not we know that god's stepping into the flesh to take on uh the world for us um in a sense, going ahead of us is that sacrifice and the last one. And they don't want to admit that they denied him. Now, we know they got the word in the tablets and their Torah and their laws from God, our laws too, um, the commandments and guarding off from the seven deadly sins. It's all in there for them to read, just like it is for us, with one exception, dropping the sacrifices. And um, they don't want to admit that people actually think that they can spill blood to cover their sins. It doesn't work like that. We're all instructed to follow the commandments not as closely as we can to be righteous, but the righteous will follow the commandments. It's as simple as that. So we're not out, out, we're not, well, yeah, we hope that we can convert people into uh, activating the Christ spirit within you, but we're not converting into Judaism. The king of the Jews Christ, non-Jewish, the man from Galilee, not Jerusalem, Galilee, a non-Jew will be the king of the Jews. And you might ask, why is that? Because the position that God puts within people is non-religion. It it's it's a symbol of Christ within mankind, regardless of where the Abrahamic tribes or Abram traveled. You know, um, hence you'll have bloodlines in Jewish cultures that the mother will pass on the Jewish heritage to her offsprings. And that's how they carry it on through the ages, um, that lineage. And Abram wasn't a Jew. And from what I understand, neither was Noah. I have to look more into that if some of you know more than I do. If I have forgotten something, which I don't believe I have, but it's just with um, Abram or Noah. It wasn't that these were just like totally angelic beings. They had their issues. They were the best in their time. They were the most upstanding people of their time. It doesn't mean they were perfect. They definitely weren't Christ. But they were listening to the word of God and being guided by God. Like Abram, the angel took him outside and said, look at the sky. Your, your offsprings will be as numerous as the stars. That's who we are. That's our roots, all of us. 
we all stem there. It's like I was saying yesterday, I do believe there's not one of us that has a, a ancient relative that's older than anybody else's because we all stem from the same place like that. And there's people out there that think that they are far superior with their knowledge and their scholarly that they would know more than other people because of the place that they were born, which just is not true. We're not out to invade somebody's culture and turn them in to another religion. The religion that is written on everybody's heart is from God no matter where you hail from. So, anyway. I just wanted to speak on that some more because there's so many uh, Christians that especially well, the Zionist churches um, trying to practice Judaism. What the are you doing? <laughs> you know? Who's who's your king? Moloch or Christ? Pick one. Hurry up. Time's short. You know, within your hearts. I mean a life a life is a short thing if you think about it really. How quickly it really goes. You know. But all these and it and it's unbelievable. Christian pastors insisting to teach and preach in Hebrew of the Hebrew ways when that in itself, that whole essence of that practice, not the faith in God, but things that are done that God told him to stop doing, um, they think that sacrifice is going to cover 600 and some laws that God laid down for them in the beginning. It's not like that anymore. And um, yeah, covenants were made, but two people have to keep that agreement. It can't be, you can't kill a calf, a heifer, and say my sins are forgiven. It's like if I go outside and blast a bird out of the tree and tell God I've murdered, but now this absolves me of my sins because I took one of your living beings and displayed it to you on the altar. And this this could go back to like um, Cain and Abel or um, I was going to say Esau and Jacob, but or ya ya Jacob, um, either either. But I mean, going back even like, and then being that Cain, um, Adam had known his wife, and then an angel came onto her and created another being, not making them fraternal twins, Cain and Abel, but actually from two different seeds within itself. And it's the Canaanites that um, were not the Israelites, uh, but they're pretending that they are. Because you have to follow the words and the laws of God. You can't make excuses and you can't sacrifice your sins away. That is why Christ did that for us. Even stepping into the flesh, they try and pre pretend like um, this is a separate being that he couldn't actually be a representation of God as like a rabbi, are you a representation of God? Is the Pope a representation of God? Or is the Messiah, like he says, I and the Father are one, they call him the only begotten Son, the word begotten, meaning to instill that essence of what God is into a human being. And that was denied. And it already happened. The reason we know it happened is for you and I carrying on the faith and the love of God within ourselves regardless of the scriptures 
although it is cool to understand or at least try to understand what history is if it hasn't been twisted. And if we can prove that it's been twisted and where people migrated to and who, who they were, and yes, we can, and yes, we have, and there's multitudes of channels out there now teaching the truth of where, like, their family or your family migrated to or from. It's an important thing to understand who you are, you know. Wouldn't you, don't you agree that, and with all honesty, that would be the best approach for everybody? And being that humble and humbleness and honesty is a part of Judaism, where did that go? Where did the part where um, the Spirit of God comes on to the Gentiles and we're supposed to be grafted together and that Christ adopts people into his family now? Not being a non-Jew, we're not being adopted into Judaism. It's the other way around. It's the progression of the family roots and what God expects of us that the commandments were not being abided by and still aren't. And that's why the languages were separated at the Tower of Babel because they, they were using the Word of God in a more physical sense and the spiritual thing that it's supposed to do to teach our souls how to be a whole human being like that, you know? So don't ignore the fact we're not trying to become Jews. And if we can help somebody understand that the Spirit of God works in all of mankind, that's good because um, Judaism does not teach that. I mean, it's in there. They just don't teach it. They believe everybody's from one, but they don't even believe their own teachings. They don't practice it, and the humility or the humbleness of the whole thing just is not there. It's a really important thing. I have seen far too many Christians trying to become Jewish. Really, what are you doing? What are you doing? A non-Jew died for your sins. Jewish people tell you that's not true. It's up to you to determine what you think in your heart is the right thing to do. Because in the end, every knee shall bow. What does that tell you? To Christ, the Messiah. They say that several Messiahs have come. No, one, the same one, you know. And we all know the Antichrist is put in his place before him. That's, um, they say, well, they have to have a temple for that to happen. And we all know the temple of God is in our bodies. We are taught that, that our bodies are that temple of Christ. And tell me, you don't feel the word of God on your heart. Because you do. Whether people want to admit it or not, you don't need a book for that. We're all born with that. You can take steps to... It's like taking steps downward, and that's why people have, we have like the analogy of reaching down and helping our sisters and our brothers back up um, when they've faltered. We help each other because out of love, we don't keep them down there and say, I know more about the faith of God and you're down there on that step, so I'm just going to kick you down a little bit lower with my smug superiority and my pretense that I know more scholarly ways 
that I can influence you into my mode of thinking. That isn't what Christians do. We help each other up. You know, we don't have that air, or you better not have that air of superiority because we're all brothers and sisters on this planet in that respect. And that's a humility that Judaism does not have. So, um, the teaching is, isn't that one person is better than a, a, another or would know more or would be more loving, kind, or faithful. That's a Christian belief. You know, loving kindness is a um, universal thing, <laughs> you know. You don't have to have a set religion. I mean, it would help to have faith in God. And, and it probably wouldn't be a pretense if you did. But if you study... Like the Torah, if you've read the Talmud even, which is, um, there's some of it that's pretty thoroughly disgusting. Um, and I know that there's people with uh, Jewish roots that see different... Um, rights and promises within their own teachings that they think that they have above other people in the world when all people are created equal. That's my fight. That's your fight against people that believe that they're better than another person for any reason. And like I was writing on that live stream, um, that's their holy land. That's that's the hub of the dark cabal that has never left that area that had branched out and still keep that as their hub, their land, their promised land. To me, USA, America is my promised land. All land is holy to God. All of it. You know, there's Native Americans. You you could not make, like, take the Lakota Sioux, each, or rather, Dakota. Each one of those adults make over a million dollars every year. That's the intelligence of um, those people that are far from low life, that have a faith in the Father, the great spirit, and honor the earth as mother that was made from the Father that they take from and thank her. They thank him and bless her, which is appropriate. But people are treated like, well, your religion doesn't matter because you're over there. Oh, hell yes, it does matter. Have you ever sat? over 10,000 feet up in the air and looked across the United States of America or into Canada or been in Canada and looked around in the world and thought to yourself, this is so spectacular. Or I could sit up by Lake Superior at all that fresh water as big as any ocean anywhere it's called inland oceans, fresh water, that you couldn't pay me zillions of dollars to believe that what they call Gitchagumi is less than what you call a holy place. It's I can write a book and, and there have been teachings on this of the Great Spirit and holy places within America that aren't recognized because it's not widely known or celebrated, you know, but it's true. 
you couldn't pay me a gazillion dollars to go sit in some what they think, whether you think it's a portal or whatever you think it is, with your holy places. And then I heard like Tovia say, Mr. Singer, Rabbi Singer, say he's only like 10 minutes away from where he could go read the Dead Sea Scrolls. Cool, Sparky. They're fake. And and I'm telling you this being raised by, and as a rabbi, get this real close. My teachings came from um, a Jewish Freemason, three-time over Grand Master, Jesuit, with Shriners' rights, the Minneapolis Jew. That's who raised me. That's where my teachings came from, the same as yours. But guess what? I'm part Native American, and I celebrate my country. I'm a Christian. I celebrate Christ, not anybody else. And that's on behalf of the Father. He's our go-between if we need that. But in every religion or faith around the world, it's taught to seek the face of the Father because ultimately that's who you want to get close to. It really isn't like a shaman or a rabbi or witch doctor, yeah, witches, um, or people teaching mysticism, which is really not a mystery. It's the mechanics and the makings of this illusion that we live in, that we're here to learn before our spirits ascend, unless you know that you have no intention of ascending and you're going to be dealing in the flesh for eternity, which is a fable, because you will not have that ability ultimately we have to honor the one that can make or break us, that put us here and can take us off, and nobody else. So in other words, I don't want to go to Israel, and you couldn't pay me to be Jewish. Is that clear enough? <laughs> you know? And yes, I've read probably just as much or more than any rabbi on this planet. And I will challenge you with the facts. Abraham had seeds, Abram, and renamed, of course, we know that. Why was that? Separation from his family is why. What family was that that he was to separate from? In the lineage of David, what's that? That David was what they called the sinful Christ? That bloodline? What's that all about? Rabbi, can you tell me? I can tell you. I'll just wait a bit for you to think about how are you going to approach that with people? It doesn't matter. See what I'm saying? We're not turning into Judaism. And whether you want to see the Christian aspect or not, doesn't really make a difference, ultimately. Yeah, I'll have one more cigarette with you and talk for a little bit. Oh yeah, it's it's disturbing when I see these pastors reading Hebrew at people. And then for somebody to assume that people haven't studied Hebrew, that um, we wouldn't be able to read or speak that if we chose, that's just freaking silly, <laughs> you know. Some of us know multiple languages, you know. Hence the ability to dig down into the teachings from different cultures and be able to um, 
masterly put together what the Masons have um, kept under wraps at the uh, Rosicrucian and the Jesuits were supposed to enlighten the people with the knowledge of the workings of humanity and um, making our lives go around in a better way and people forget like the library of Alexandra that's not Jewish um, but Jewish scholars studied there didn't they why did they do that well, I'll tell you why, because they were a branch of the Islamic nation, one of the three branches. One went to Mediterranean, one went off into like a Nord Nordic Slavic, um, European, Northern European, and um, Chinese, and Mongolian, the Finliners, um, there's a lot of connections that people don't make. And which came first, Judaism or Christianity? Now, here's the clincher people. Ancient Ethiopia had beliefs pre-Sumerian that were Christ's teaching. Christians, ancient Christians that are not being spoke about enough. And they say there's reasons because there's different things in the Ethiopian Bible, the Holy Bible, the scriptures that weren't canonized by the Jews. Is that so? <laughs> do you think the Ethiopians care about as much as I do? We care about the things that are kept from people that were cut out or added to which it says within your own unhumble books that you were not supposed to do. Isn't that true? It's true. You know it is. So, uh, my fellow Christian family, Time to start spreading the word that we aren't becoming Jewish. I'm not getting down on Jewish people. I love my family members. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm telling you the facts that when somebody's representing God and they're not doing it in the right way, they need to be called out by way of helping them, too. This is not a put-down. Were you trying to put me down by saying that Christians are trying to... Why, why are... What was the statement? Then why are Christians studying Judaism? Well, because we're not. We read the Old Testament as a part of the roots of our history, but the New Testament is what we're focused on for these times that was written for these times. The, the ancient writings were documentation of the times they were in with some prophecies of these times and books that would be written for the people for these times. Isn't that true? It's a yes or no question right there. If you know your scriptures, do you know that? That the New Testament was written and is canonized? Although misconstrued, but it's there. It's super important, people. You're not to be converted into Judaism. If you're a Christian, right? And you're not a Zionist Christian. Christ cannot be found in the church. You will not hear ministers and pastors teaching you that in your church. 
Who sits in the church? Satan does. That's who's running the whole show. Of course, by now, you know that. <coughs> Maybe some people of Jewish heritage find that humorous. I don't think it's funny at all that Christians would adopt a part of uh, ancient faith that had tablets written for them that they don't abide by. Cousins, isn't that repulsive? Brothers and sisters. It's harder to kill your brother than it is your cousin. Is that is that the or to usurp you can usurp your cousin, use them easier than you can your brother. Or if your brother moves to another country and adopts another faith, then it would be easier to slaughter your brother of another faith through sacrifice. You're absolved of your sins. It doesn't work like that anymore. And even in your own scriptures, it tells you that Moses told you to stop the idol worship and the sacrificing. But it's happening all over the place. How about tithings to the church? Is that something people should be doing? The church. Now, if Christ can't be found in a physical building, who are you tithing to? Are you helping your fellow man? Are you tithing to the church? Or are you tithing to a building? Well, I think I made my point. I hope it's very clear. I hope it gets shared around. We're not converting to Judaism here. It wasn't funny. Being snub about that and asking why a Christian would look into history and then progress from there, I don't find anything funny about that at all. Um, I would be humiliated and disgusted with myself if I treated people like that, and you say we're all connected, hope you felt that. I hope you felt the sorrow of our connection with all that. I'd still give you a cup of coffee if you came in for a visit, and I'd probably be an ex-chef and food service worker part of my um, young adult life. My, my preparation skills probably surpass a lot of surpassable rabbinical sacrifices that you make. Even cutting an onion bothers me the way some people, I've seen people that claim they're Jewish and their food preparation skills are filthy. What do you think about that? I just said it. Yeah, well, guess what? Native Americans teach their children how to lower their gaze, just like you do, just like a woman that's ministrating isn't allowed. There's different things in different cultures that have the same practice with different words and they're being dishonored in the biggest way. So I want everybody to know that. So I, you have a really beautiful day. I hope I gave you some things to really think about. We're not trying to be Jewish, Rabbi Singer. Okay? Thank you, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. Pine means red, it means pineal, and pina, and pina, and I think you get the gist, but did you know, 
Um, well, no, that's that's for it. Doesn't matter. I think you got the gist of what I'm trying to say. I hope you did. Let me know if you did. Did you get it? We're not trying to be Jewish in spirit. Okay. Peace. Have a good night or day, wherever you're at.